welcome back to another episode of Coffee and a Convo Podcast. We know you guys have been waiting for this one. We left you hanging. Hanging. Hanging on a cliff. Um, if you don't know, I am one of your hosts, Jenna Berglund. And I'm the other one, Cameron Sweer. And this week is a continuation of our last podcast. Go ahead and listen to it. It's all about our testimonies, kind of our upbringing, how we, um, a few of our core beliefs of what we grew up, Mennonite Brethren, and some groundwork so you won't hopefully be too confused in this episode. Because yeah. we're just going to j- jump in on kind of some different theological questions um, surrounding Christianity, some different misconceptions surrounding Christianity, and just the whole works. So I don't think we're even going to do an intro for this. I no. think I think you know it's it's a part two like it's the second half of totally. the other episode yeah. so you guys are ready you know what it is it's about so mm-hmm. all right so I just thought I have a list here and so we're just gonna go with the very and also sorry if you hear my dog he's, he's very, hanging out with he's us he's also very loud like, yeah, he's very of, vocal he's a very vocal dog it's so funny oh my gosh literally what he's, he's so doing cute. right now is the funniest thing I have ever seen he's he's huffing and puffing and grunting and groaning and. He's, like, napping, but he's, like, really tired because he just came from a walk, and he's exhausted. Okay. He's, like, too tired to nap. He's, like, I gotta just get... Yeah, so if you hear any... (laughs) Yeah, that's that's him. him. (laughs) He just looked at me. (laughs) Okay, so the very first one, the first misconception on Christianity that we're going to discuss is good works get you to heaven, and I think we kind of, we touched on this one a little bit last week, yeah, but, um, yeah, we just wanted to talk about this one. So, I think that this is, like, Mormon culture for sure. But there's, like, lots of different um, religions, cults, denominations, like, so many different things out there that it's all about, like, works. And, like, what you do here on Earth is if you're going to get to heaven or not. Or, like, even that's, like, how, um, what was that Buddhist? What is the one where it's, like, you're reincarnated as something and it'll be better? Oh, yeah. Isn't that Buddhist? It's whichever one believes in karma. I was, we've, you yeah. guys, we have taken just enough religious classes to give you some kind of murky information, <laughs> um, but nothing super solid. So literally, as per well, always, I just, like, Google it too. This is a conversation. Take everything we're saying with a grain of salt. Go do your own research because you know us. We have a conversation. We don't do that good at researching. Um, you know my my usual disclaimer at the top of the episode. Um. Sorry, I'm just trying to, like, look at it. Or oh, there's many. It says it's in many Indian religions. Um, Hinduism, Buddhism, and then it names a bunch okay. of other ones that I don't So you're right on. Um, yeah. So, like, can you not, sir? Please. Calm. Or even in, I mean, even if you think about it, well, that's reincarnation that you're specifically talking about. Yeah. But also, even in the Catholic faith, or in the Catholic religion, you have that you can be in purgatory and someone can say enough prayers for you to kind of push you into right, heaven. Right. Which that's paraphrasing you guys, that's not, you know, exactly how it works. Yeah. But also along those lines. also like I know in Mormon there's different like tiers of heaven. Mm-hmm. And so like depending on how good you were on earth depends which tier of heaven you get into. Right. Yeah. Um and yeah. So pretty much we do not believe in that. Like good works do not get you to heaven. Um and honestly that's like the beauty in Christianity or in the community we're talking about is um that it's all about like just like a um and it's honestly just like the grace of god and it's just um his selfless love for us and um right i mean that's what it comes down to it's the whole reason he died on the cross right because here's the deal jesus was perfect god holy spirit three in one trinity perfect never did bad thing so, perfectness had to sacrifice for us, die on the cross, die for our sins, because that was, like, literally any form of Christianity that doesn't believe that, who believes in any type of good works gets you to heaven, I just don't get it, because I'm like, what was the point of the cross? Mm-hmm. What was the point of the cross? Because, yes, it says in the Bible that good works without faith is dead, and I do, I mean, it's true. Mm-hmm. You have, if you are not doing the works, if you're not walking the walk to back up the talk, then yes, you do have a lukewarm faith. You have a, quote unquote, dead faith. Mm-hmm. You 100% do. Because if you have a true faith and you have that true relationship with Christ, you will want to live the life and walk the walk and talk the talk and do the deeds and take in the hungry and take in the poor mm-hmm. and, you know, close the clothing list, whatever that verse is. You know, yeah. you'll want to do all the things. You'll want to have all the fruits of the Spirit. If you are walking one-on-one with Jesus Christ as a Christian should. Mm -hmm. So, yes, in that way, you are doing works. You Mm -hmm. are following a list of rules because 
of that relationship with Jesus Christ because you have the Holy Spirit hopefully guiding your actions on the day to day because you're in constant prayer because of all these things. Yes, you have those works, you have those actions that back up your faith, but that's not what gets you into heaven. Mm-hmm. Totally. Because if it was works, we'd all like nobody would. Make we'd it to all right. fall short. Like literally, it's in the Bible. We all fall short. Sins. Of the glory of God. Everybody sins. It doesn't matter how many good works you do. You will never measure up. Mm -hmm. And, like, that sounds, you know, almost, like, degrading in a way. You know, like, you'll never be good enough. Mm -hmm. But that was the whole point of Jesus coming and dying. A perfect being bore the sins of the world and died for us, rose Mm -hmm. three days later. So we had a pathway to heaven. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know. It's, you know, it's the new covenant. It's we don't have to do the things that the, you know, that the Jews and Christians and whatever had to do in the Old Testament. Right. Because Jesus came, died for our sins. Yeah, which and is made like animal, way. animal sacrifices. Right. Animal <laughs> sacrifices, all the cleansing, all mm-hmm. of the new list of, you know, all of the old list of rules and regulations and whatever the heck right. we had to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we don't we don't have to worry about any of that. We don't have to do any of that because mm-hmm. Jesus came and he died for our sins. And so the whole this whole idea of works gets you into heaven, no, you're that's not it. There's a little missed up there. It's mm-hmm. your works will your works will reflect what's on the inside. Right. And hopefully that's Jesus. All right. If you're if you po- proclaim to be a Christian, mm-hmm. hopefully your life will magnify that and reflect, sorry, reflect that. Right. No. Yeah. Absolutely. There you guys have it. Okay. The next one is God is cruel because he allows bad things um, to happen to good people. Well, honestly, just bad things in general. Just bad things in general. Um, and, okay, I actually pulled this one from, like, I, I screenshotted this off of a website, and I thought that this was really good. So, it says, uh, I'll just, like, read this a little bit to you. Most people, and specifically non-believers, struggle with this one. The reality is we live in a broken and simple world where bad things happen. We can go back to when the devil chose to rebel against God because of his free will. That started the whole ball rolling, including the fall of Adam and Eve. After those events, we have lived in an imperfect world. And then it goes on a little bit more, but I just thought, like, we should backtrack a little bit. So, like... If you guys don't see, I just don't know who's listening, but if you like the devil, Satan was thrown out of heaven because he thought that he could be God and like be better than God. So he was like thrown and he is also referred to as like a fallen angel. And then he went and tempted Adam and Eve. You guys know the story. Eve ate the apple, shared it with Adam. When God told them not to, everything was perfect before that point. Um, and not then, not an actual apple. The fruit. Sorry, the, I'm sorry. The fruit <laughs> of the tree Thank of you. knowledge of good and Thank evil. Thank you. I actually sometimes get really annoyed when it's always an apple because it's like we it's don't not, know. It's, it's what we don't know what it was. We don't it know was, what it was. It was its own special fruit, yeah. and it was in the middle of the garden. And God said, "Hey, you can have all this beautiful, glorious, gorgeous right. fruit all around you. It was but a perfect not world." This one. They ran around naked, and all the fabulous. animals were great, and they, you know, everyone was alive and happy, happy. and yep. whatever. And then God. I was like, hey, you can have everything except for this one. You can have everything you want, but you cannot eat fruit from this one tree in the middle of the garden. And it is the tree that bears the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Which is kind of true because then Satan was all like, psst, psst, God doesn't want you to eat this because then you'll know as um, much as, God, as, much as God does. And then they take a bite of the fruit and they realize they're naked. And they're like, gosh, darn it. Gosh, and then they like and then they have to kill an, like they have to kill some No, first didn't they like um sew figs or something or like Oh yeah, sew figs something. And then God killed an animal, I think. And then God was like, Why are you hiding from me? It's all in Genesis. Dang, we know this really like word yeah. for word. Wow, yeah. we're really good. Um Okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> meanwhile, <they're> <laughs> meanwhile, actual Christian scholars are listening, they're like, they're botch <laughs> they're botching this so hard. Okay, we're giving you guys a gist, a really fast version. Really fast gist. So that's mm-hmm. that. So then that is what we refer to. As the fall, as because the fall. Correct. Um, Eve gave into temptation, dragged yeah. Adam down along with her. Now we have painful childbearing, and Satan was, uh, you know, because he had disguised himself as a snake. Then snake has also, to slither also, on the ground. I don't think we knew it was a snake. What? I'm pretty sure it wasn't referred to as a snake, was it? Yeah, it was a serpent. It was referred to as a serpent. As a serpent, and- but is a serpent technically a snake? Yes. Oh, it is. Okay. It is technically that a one snake I wasn't because sure then God, like, damned uh, snakes to slither on their bellies on the ground because okay, I've definitely, whatever, whatever. I've definitely heard, this is probably, like, another whole theological thing. I've definitely heard people be, there's, like, a whole explanation Dude, of how it wasn't. Dude, I don't know the original Greek or maybe Hebrew. Maybe wasn't I a don't. snake. 
Oh okay. my gosh. Okay. Well, whatever. So that is what we were in the Christian okay. peoples refer to as the fall. Okay. So moving on. So with sin in place and the free will that is graced upon us by God, this is the reality of our situation. Yes, God is all powerful, but that if he used that power to fix everything, it would also take away our free will, which is a precious right. gift from God. But the good news is Jesus sacrificed himself, which Jenna um, already covered. And this is presented... A uh, brand new gift for us from a loving God, which is salvation, which we covered in last week's episode. Mm-hmm. So, dang. So, essentially, I'm very proud of us. We, I am. We conquered very, that. We literally well. were like, bada bing, bada boom, this uh, is what sin is, this is where sin came from. Yeah. Um, but essentially, what it comes down to is we have bad things in the world and bad things happen because we have free will. And that is literally what started off the first you know, if you will, domino effect of the very first sin ever committed in the Garden of Eden was because Eve had the choice either mm-hmm. to eat the apple or to not eat the apple. I think, I and pe- some people are like, well, why didn't, why did God even put the tree in the garden in the first place? I'm like, as an act of free will. If the choice mm-hmm. to be evil wasn't even there, well, that's true. that would be, that would be taking there away you your free, that would be taking away mm-hmm. free will. Yeah. That would be, you have no choice but to be good for all of eternity. Mm-hmm. That would take away free will. And that would take away yeah. our choice to love an all loving God. That's so true. That's a good point. Good job. In the long run. Anyway, so hope, hopefully you guys followed that. Um, that is the reason that bad things happen is because we have free will and mm-hmm. we're human yeah and humans are flawed because of the first sin because of the first fall or the only fall the fall um i would also yeah i'd also like to maybe this could be one of those things where we're going to contradict not contradict ourselves but we're going to like it's a question i might not be able to answer but a theological debate if you will this is going to be a theological debate um so many people say this phrase and you might disagree with me but they say everything happens for a reason Mm, mm -mm. nope and I don't agree with that. No. <laughs> um, because I don't think everything does happen for... Like, like, there's people out there, like, I think... I think Ray and I have had conversations about this, and I've kind of, like, debunked his theory. I was like, eh, no. Um, who will be like, everything's happening for a reason. Like, the reason that you lost your job is, it was, like, all God's Because plan. of this, this, and this. Yeah. Or the reason that, like, this I person can't... had cancer was so you could yeah. learn this lesson by losing yeah. them. Or the reason no! that I can't have, or the reason that I can't have kids is because, like, God doesn't, like, want me to have kids or, like, all these different Or things. you're learning this lesson yeah. or because someone else mm-hmm. needs to be adopted yeah. and look at this beautiful thing that came up or your life the because reason, of this terrible thing. Yeah, or the reason your mom died or your brother died or someone who was really close to you died, like, at a young age. It's like, it happened for a reason, like, it's all God's plan. And I don't believe that, frankly. I do not because right. everything is free will and just because it's free will, like, that doesn't mean that that those are the decisions that god wants us to make mm-hmm. so it's like uh okay someone's like drunk a drunk driver hits your mom and kills her um that was that drunk driver's decision to drink and then it was his decision to get in the car and drive mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that that's what god wanted him to do that right. wasn't god's plan like right. and i was listening to is a famous singer i can't remember his name right now and he was talking about how he's really having a hard time like his daughter died like at a really young age like mm-hmm. i think she was like a toddler and he was just really struggling with all of it. And he was, like, screaming. He said he was, like, screaming in the car. And he's like, why? Like, why? And he was, like, crying. And he said he could just hear God saying, um, oh, I, I can't remember if it was, yeah, he was screaming why. And then, um, one second, let me think about this a second. He was screaming why, and he was saying, like, how upset he was, and he felt like he heard, like, God saying the same thing back. Like, that God was mourning, and that he was also um upset about it too and he was saying how in that moment he realized like god didn't necessarily want his daughter to die like that wasn't god's plan but we live in a fallen world and we live in a world where there's sin and bad things happen and it happened and um yeah i mean his well this is gonna be a whole other thing but like his daughter he was saying like that his daughter was in heaven now because she was too young to make that decision of if or if not, uh, she would have accepted Jesus into her heart. So, I just thought that that was, like, super interesting. Um, yeah, I 110% agree. I think, I think what is important to you realize and remember and keep in mind is, I, you probably already said it, but yeah, bad things don't happen for reason, but can God make the most beautiful, amazing things come 
out of bad situations right. and bad things. A hundred percent. Yeah, totally. Yes. Literally, God takes what is filthy and terrible and evil and makes something beautiful and good mm-hmm. come out of it in the end. Uh, literally, like, it's what he's in the business of doing. It's his thing. It's, it's his, his showstopper. Um, it's, like, what he spends all day doing. I don't yeah. you know. That's what he spends all day doing. what he spends all day doing. Um, okay, so the next point is the Bible contradicts itself. Which... Hmm. Or even just, like, says some, like, outlandish things. Mm -hmm. Because, you guys, if... Especially the Old Testament. Like, when I go through Mm -hmm. and I read the Old Testament, I'm just like, what is happening? Like, literally, what is happening? What the age is going on. What the age is going on. Um, and... (sighs) Okay. So, like, a lot of things that happen in the Bible and a lot of things that people like to point at are a lot of, like, the old laws. Or people are like, well, back, you know, in the Bible, they stoned a woman for whatever, whatever. And I'm like, that was a people that wasn't God. And that's another thing, is that there's a lot of stories in the Bible, and there's Mm -hmm. a lot of verses in the Bible, and there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Like, it's not just Jesus talking the entire time. That's not it. There's a lot of different stories and a lot of different context, Mm -hmm. and this is in context here, and this is why it's put in here, and these are the verses surrounding it that makes it mean this, and this was it in the original text, and Mm -hmm. this is what the Hebrew word meant, and this is how it's gotten muddled over time, and blah, 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 blah. And there's a lot of different things that you can go back and be like... there's just so much. There's, There's so, so much. much. There's so much. So when people are like, the Bible contradicts itself because at one point it says this, and then at another point it says this, and I'm like, okay, well, over here it was in this context. Over here it was in this context. It was in the New Testament when it was said here. This was in the Old Testament when it was mm-hmm. said here. Things are different because God came and died on the cross, so now we don't have to follow old laws. And that wasn't even God's law back then anyway. It was man's law, and it mm-hmm. was vengeful people stoning the so-and-so. And... I don't know. I just, I feel like that's what a lot of things happens to, especially with social media these days, is someone will, like, pick oh my gosh. a verse, like, like, just a random verse, number. one sentence, one sentence out of the Old Testament and be like, well, the Bible says this, does that mean that we're not supposed to blah, 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 like, ugh. It's like, cool, that was, like, in a story where God is actually telling us not to do that, so. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or, okay, so one thing in particular, you guys, that just gets me <clears throat> riled, um, is feminist Twitter. Feminist yeah. Twitter. I'm feminist not on Twitter. Twitter. Like, I feminist have a Twitter, Twitter account. I'm never on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. I'm on t- Twitter here and there because mostly I get on there for Argus, um, 9 Megan Simon, and pictures of cows, and um, also, like, Midwest, like, mid- just Midwest things. Oh, like, there's like so there's like two tw- There's, like, two Midwest Twitter accounts that just, just have me rolling and just give me my little hit of serotonin in the day. Oh, gosh, that's what I'm going to do tonight now. Um, yeah. I'm going to lay in bed and so look at that. So stinking good. Um, if you need some recs for some good Midwestern okay. content, I'll okay. send them to you. But... So there's this one in particular that people, feminists, they love to pick out, and they're like, this is why the Bible's trash, right? Oh, okay, I'm ready for it. Okay. What is it? I don't even know. It is Leviticus 15. Okay, what's Leviticus 15? If any of y'all have access to a Bible, you can literally download a Bible app. Go read Leviticus 15. It's a wild ride. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, a, or just the whole book of Leviticus, you guys. And it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of the old laws and a lot of the old rules and okay. stuff. And one of them... That just really get feminist Twitter pe- women just worked, like, very worked up. Okay, ready? It says, um, well, when a woman has her regular flow of blood. Oh, are gosh. You I think I already know. I it's already know so, what the Bible said. Uh, it's oh. so, it's so ridiculous. But this is, like, just for example, like, guys, we're laughing, but just for example, this is something that, like, seriously turns people away from the faith because they have no context. They don't right. understand, right. right? So, okay, when I'm, uh, where is it? Here we go. Any Okay, when a woman has her regular flow of blood, the impurity of her monthly period will last seven days, and anyone who touches her will, bl- will be unclean till evening. Anything she lies on during her period will be unclean, and anything she sits on will be unclean. Whoever touches her bed must wash his clothes and bathe with water, and he will be unclean till evening. You guys. Yeah, I've heard Listen that. to yeah. this. Listen to this. Okay. And there's a lot of different things in here, too, talking about, like, uncleanness. And they had to wash however many times to be, like, pure or whatever. Like, certain animals were unclean. They could not eat unclean animals. Okay. So, all of that, right? This is literally back in Bible times. Right. Back in Bible times. Yeah. And 2,000 years ago, germs were considered... Germs weren't a thing until, like, the early... 
either the late 1800s or the we early 1900s. We literally 1900. did an episode on it. We literally this. did an episode on it where yeah. people thought that somebody was crazy because they thought that it was, th- like, the original theory were little bits of corpses yes. were getting into mother's vaginas during childbirth. And because the same hospital that most, mort- the highest rate of mortality rate for mothers and babies was the same hospital where they performed autopsies on corpses. So this is how germ theory came to be back yeah. before we even knew that germs were a thing, right? Right. right? Stay with me, guys. I'm off on a tangent. You okay. understand where I'm I'm actually going. here for okay? this. Okay? Yeah. So back, I forget the exact year, sometime in the late 1800s, sometime early 1900s, um, before we really, really developed this whole germ theory thing. Actually, the first guy who even mentioned it being a possible thing ended up dying in an asa- in insane asylum yes. because they're like, you're crazy. I remember That's you telling me this. Thing. Yeah. That's not a thing, You right? tell all of us this. Um, it's on an episode of Stuff You Should Know. Yeah. Listen really... to that podcast. It's a good one. Um, I mean, or like listen to our episode, too. Yeah, or listen to our episode, too. Anyway, so think about this. 2000, that was only like over 100, 150 years ago, somewhere in that ballpark range, mm-hmm. right? Um, think about 2,000 years ago, okay? God gave all these rules to his people because he's like, y'all, period blood's nasty. It gets everywhere. Like, he wasn't being like, oh, she is unclean, she is unholy. He was like, literally, she's got nasty germs that could kill you, stay away from it, dude. Yeah. Like, that was the whole point. It was like, wash your hands ten times before eating, because y'all don't know what soap is, and I don't want you getting worms. Like, p- people who are like, oh, and like, they say that she's unclean, because she's, she is. Like, they don't know what soap is, they bathe once a month. All right. <laughs> they don't have feminine hygiene products. Literally, when he says... She's she unclean. Ble- she's literally bleeding. She's all nasty. Yeah. She is nasty. And then the whole like, y- if you touch her, you will be unclean till sundown. Like, there's a time where you can have like the germiest thing on your hands, and they become ungermy over time. You know, whatever yeah. that is. I'm sorry, scientists who are like, she's just in a terrible <laughs> job. Scientists are totally listening. Not scientists, but like people in the medical field know oh, what I'm yeah. trying to say, and I'm yeah. completely botching it. Um. Anyway. But people refer, so oh that's just, gosh. like, one example where people take something from the Bible, they pluck it out, and they're mm-hmm. like, this and this, and I yeah. can never be religious because of this. And I'm like, literally, he was just trying, because the God who created the universe, mm-hmm. who knew what germs were before actual people knew what germs were, right. was like, hey, do this, this, and this to keep yourself clean, right. because don't want you, like, catching a little something funky mm-hmm. and dying. Also, I think it's really interesting Oh, you're no, like right. um. If you like look at like all of like the wording and the way that they said things in the Bible, and then you actually translated it to like how we would talk today, it would be so different. And then I feel like, you like that wording, like what you just said, mm-hmm. like his wording, whatever. I feel like if he'd be like, "Hey, she's having her menstrual cycle. Maybe don't get like don't touch the blood with your hands. Like you know what I mean? Right. Like that would be like how it would be worded today. But then it's like people take that from like years ago and like right. And it's like oh. It's like, yeah, obviously they talked differently. Yeah. And they, they talked talk different things. We talked differently 100 years ago. We talked right. differently 50 totally. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. And so, and then you, you try, I mean, as the Bible, I mean, it's literally a sacred document or mm-hmm. whatever, a sacred book, historical book that has, yeah, whether you believe in its context or not, and you really believe the faith, religious aspects of it, it is a proven historical book that has survived 2,000 yes. plus years. Right. Um, literally, like, also, literally, also, atheist scholars believe it is a historical book. You, you can't, you can't. Yes. Yeah. Also, it's also really interesting because they has been, like, so many things, like, stories in the Bible that have been proven to be true. Right. Prophecies that have been uh, true. Yeah. Well, no, 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 like, stories, too. Like, okay, so, like, the story of, I'm gonna get this one wrong, and everyone's probably gonna be screaming at me. Um, was it with Abraham, and then, like, Pharaoh and all his people came? And the seas, the seas were parted, and then oh, they yeah, yeah. was that with Abraham. Uh, mm, uh, mm. Okay, we looked it up. You guys, it was Moses. It was Moses. Sorry, we're embarrassed. Sorry, gone for a second. I'm embarrassed Dang. for her. Okay, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> asked, my introduction was it Joseph? Joseph. I'm like, it's not Joseph. But, wait a second. I was like, is it is Joseph? I'm like, no. Yeah, right away. She's like, no. Okay. Anyways, the parting of the um, Red Sea. Yeah, Red Sea or whatever. Okay, and then there was, like, the chariots, right, that came. Yeah. The chariots or whatever. And I'm going to, wow, I should have looked this up. While I so, Pharaoh, so Pharaoh is chasing 
Pharaoh Moses. was chasing Moses and all of God's people. And all of God's people. And then Moses was, and they were, like, walking through. The Red Sea was parted. Yeah. Right? Walking through. And everyone's all, like, you know, people who don't believe the Bible are like, that didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and then. all of Pharaoh's people did said, the dead man's float. Yeah. Singing Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Oh, 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 baby, let my people go. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Or, yeah, sure, you betcha if you went to a different church camp. Yeah, it depends which church camp you went to. Um. And so then all the water comes down, sweeps up all of Pharaoh's army, and they die. They go to the bottom of the Red Sea, right? Okay, this is the part I'm going to get wrong. I'm ready. Whatever those chariots were made of, I don't know what okay. it was. Yeah, mm-hmm. They were made of something. I'm following. It wasn't wood. They were no. made of something. Something Something special. special okay. Right? That made them different. They were found <gasps> in the bottom of the Red Sea. Not the wood chariots, the something special chariots. The something special chariots that survived 2,000 years. <laughs> Dude, my brother told me about this. Okay, And then so, he sent know, it to me, the article. You know that podcast, Drunk History? No, I do not know this. Okay, one. there's a podcast that's called Drunk History, and they all get tipsy, and they, retell, and they retell history stories from their own memory, right? So, like, they do the research beforehand, right? But then they all get, like, slightly tipsy, and then they retell oh history, my slightly tipsy, without any notes, and it's called Drunk, drunk History, right? I, we should make our own segment called, like, s- like slightly mediocre um, tellings of biblical things. Yeah, just, like, know. us, like, we're trying to remember from our childhood or, like, whatever. Or something we literally le- read five minutes ago. That's, that's a, true. That's what's really hard, like, talking to people about something. Like, that's true. I know what I'm talking about, and that's why, I guess, memorizing stripper is so important. But, like, yeah. I, references... No. Yeah. I can be like, it says something close to this, and I can go and Google what the mm-hmm. reference is. Yeah. But, like, it's sticking in my brain. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but anyways, isn't that wild? And then there's also, like, different proof of, like, Noah's Ark and all this stuff. It's just like, yep. dang. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Where were we? I don't, I don't even know. know. Like, how did we get on this tangent? Oh, we were still going off about the Bible oh, contradicting Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But anyway, um, so yeah, I feel like... I feel like we could have done, I'm going to apologize here because I feel like we could have done a little better job finding some specific contradictions. And if you have any questions about specific contradictions that you want to ask us about, feel free to shoot us a DM. Um, Because we know everything. Because we do know everything. We'll either rehash it in another, like, part three episode or whatever the heck. Or Or we'll do the research. Message you back. Do the research. We'll ask the pastor. But when it really comes down to it, I feel like a lot of things are just misinformation and taken out of context mm-hmm. and um totally absolutely and just yeah because god and that's another thing that says in the verses god is the same today and t- um today yesterday today and tomorrow mm-hmm. god is the same yesterday today and tomorrow yeah he's not a confusing god he's a god of clarity um but i mean the bible like we said it's a 2000 year old book it's been translated however many times it can be confusing mm-hmm. it really can be confusing um especially knowing you know, how different culture was back then, how different they talked, um, what different yeah. things even meant. Um, some Sometimes things are quite literal, like, hey, you are unclean. You literally are disgusting and full of germs. Or, yeah. hey, you are unclean. Hey, you are unholy. You are spiritually unclean. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing. I feel like that's where a lot of things with getting taken out of context and contradicting is that sometimes the Bible speaks in literal terms. Mm-hmm. Like in Leviticus, it totally yeah, and other or times, it's sometimes like parables, it's, right? It's in parables, or it's, or it's what's the word that I'm working looking for? I don't know. I thought parables was a good one. No, yeah, it, parables, but also it's like, like, uh, not paraphrasing, um, but when something it's like is a story is like something else, not like a story, Cameron, <laughs> like unclean or unclean, unclean literally oh, or sentence? unclean or oh. unclean, not literally. L- the opposite of literal was the opposite of literal. I don't know. You guys know. You guys know. <laughs> Figuratively. Figuratively. Is that the way? I don't know. No, I don't you know, know what I'm talking about. I though. know what you mean. You're not Metaphor! Metaphor! It speaks literally or metaphorically. Okay, wow. And that's where I feel like a lot of confusion also happens because it's like, okay, well, are they speaking literally? Are they speaking metaphorically? Right. And sometimes it's really hard to know. That's true. Unless you literally, that's why I feel so bad for baby Christians who don't have, like, any mentors. Because right. I'm like, if I would just open up the Bible as a baby Christian and I would have no idea, like, where to look I'd for start a cult too. guiding. Or, <laughs> yeah, right? I'd be like, yes, the Lord is saying this to me. Um, Let's go. Anyway, but yeah, I think that's where a lot of confusion happens. No, totally. Too. I totally agree. Wow. Hopefully you guys, like, t- held on for that whirlwind. So sorry. So many whirlwinds. So many whirlwinds. Okay. The next one is, every Christian believes the exact same thing, which I feel like we have totally covered by totally this time. Totally covered by this time. Um, yeah, you guys are 
you guys don't understand. That can even go down to like, okay, so we're raised in the same church, raised in the same denomination, raised with the same core values. And let me think of something. Um, Drinking. Yes. That's that's, so easy. uh, There you go. Like some people would be like, no, it's not okay to drink. And other people are like, yeah, it's totally okay to drink. And not get drunk. Yes. And not get drunk. Um, Because that one's pretty. That That one's pretty pretty obvious. blank. Yep. Do not get drunk. Um, Also, that that comes into even like modesty. Yeah. Some people will be like, no, that's not modest. Or no, you shouldn't wear a bikini. And someone else is like, I don't feel like God is telling me not to wear a bikini. What's the word that you always use? Um, different people are convicted about different convicted, things. Convicted, thank you. There or you convicted to different yeah. levels. Yes, there are some black and whites. And then yes. there are even some things that people will think are black and whites or that yeah. or that they really believe vehemently is a black and white. Like a lot of people think that drinking, not drinking. Black and white, there is no middle ground. It's not a personal belief. It's not a personal conviction. Um, then I think that there's, you know, other things like... Uh, whether or not you should kiss before you're married. Some people are like, I felt strongly convicted yeah. from the Lord to not even touch my partner before we got married. Mm-hmm. And then other people are like, I felt it was okay to set the boundary here instead. Right? Second base was okay. Second <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. You said Stop that. It right now. You said that. And I was like, <laughs> um, you know, and some people are like, I felt like it was okay to set the boundary here. Mm-hmm. And that's what we are personally convinced. Yeah, that's, you a know? Good, that's a good one. Yeah. So, and, and like you said, with modesty, you know, mm-hmm. like I really feel most comfortable when I'm wearing a very modest two piece or even better yet, a one piece. Yeah. And I don't know, I feel like, I feel like there aren't, and maybe some people are super convicted to be like, they feel like they are called maybe into the fashion world to make modest options for women who feel convicted about that. Mm -hmm. Or there are some women who are like, you know, I know it's important to be modest, but I don't feel like I need to go to such an extreme level where I can no longer wear tank tops. Right. You know, type of thing. I remember like in, I think it was like junior high or elementary school, it's like, oh, we had so many different things and so many different speakers, and I remember one time we had, like, this woman speaker, I think, come, like, to the church or whatever, and she was talking about, like, not wearing tank tops and spaghetti straps and how that was, like, inappropriate, and I was like, (laughs) um, okay! (laughs) Hey, white child! Uh, uh, thank you, next! (laughs) Thank you, next! Um, Um, but... Yeah, I don't, and honestly, we could do a whole episode on purity culture and toxic purity oh culture gosh, too. So much. Because what a monster to swallow. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna get into it because if I get into it, we'll be here for five yeah, hours. Toxic purity culture. That toxic would be a good one. culture. We yeah. need to do an episode on yeah. that because it's a problem. And the church. Uh, yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. What's next on our list? Next. <laughs> Before I start going. Um, don't get fired up. Okay. That every denomination is similar to Catholicism. This is something interesting that I have, that I came across a lot in Europe, because if you said you're a Christian, people automatically, because the Catholic Church, whether it be history or whether it, in history or whether it be like it's still happening, the Catholic Church um, was responsible for a lot of like oppression in different European countries. Mm-hmm. I'm not a history buff, you guys. I'm not going to try to go into it any more than that, um, but you go and you try to, like, witness to people or evangelize to people on the street and they hear Christian and, like, what automatically goes off in their head is the toxic Catholic church over there. Yeah. And not, you guys, not all Catholics But are, it was, like, what happened the over same, there. But it's what happened yeah. over there. It was their own experience. And most of the time, the experiences with the Catholic church, which is what they um, familiarize, like, Christianity with, they're like, oh, Christian, Catholic, mm. go hand in hand. My only, ex- my only experiences with the Catholic mm. church have been negative. Yeah. That's their only experience over there. And so, literally, you're trying to, like, talk to people or bring them yeah. to Christ. And they're like, oh, you're Christian? No, 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 no. We hate the Catholics. We right. hate the Catholics type right. of thing. Like, right. the Catholics did this and this. They turned me away when I, like, asked for help or, you know, whatever yeah. it, it yeah, happened yeah. to be. Heard so many heartbreaking stories. Um, and then, so I especially experienced that over there. But then, even even here. And so, like, the fact that you have to be like, no, no, no. Like, I'm a good Christian. <laughs> Like, like, I'm a good Christian. I'm a Christian who loves people. I'm a Christian who cares about people. Mm-hmm. I'm a Christian who, like, you know, doesn't, who cares more about people than I do about, like, my list of rules. Right. Type of thing, right? right? Um, and so, but even over here, like, I had a friend back in high school, and my mom and I had been trying to get him to come to church for, like, ever and ever and ever and ever. And you guys might have heard me tell this story once or twice before, but, um, he, my mom, she, my mom, my parents didn't drink growing up, like, ever. Mm-hmm. Like, ever, ever, ever. My yeah. mom never drank. Never drank, never drank. And it was the night of my graduation. My mom told my friend who had come to the house, she was like, hey, 
you should come to church tomorrow. Like, you know, Jenna would love to have you here. Like, yeah. all of her other, like, loved ones are here. You should come to church tomorrow. He's like, I'm never, that's not going to happen. I'm never doing it. He was raised, mind you, he was raised Catholic, very fire and brimstone, strict Catholic. Okay, right. right. Like, old school Catholic. And um, church terrified him. Okay. Like, absolutely terrified him. He was a self-proclaimed, like, devout, like, I don't know if you can be a devout atheist, but <laughs> atheist. And, um... And he's like, I'm never coming to church. You guys keep asking me, like, it's not going to happen. Right. Joking around with her or whatever. And she just keeps pushing. You know my mom. She yeah. kept pushing. Kept yeah. pushing, kept pushing. More stubborn than I am. And finally he goes, okay, I'll make you a deal. If you come out to the bar with me and you take a shot with me, right? <laughs> my mom, who has not drank in, like, 40 years, mind yeah. you. Yeah. If you come out and you take a shot with me, I'll go to church with you tomorrow. My mom goes, he hasn't even spit out the last word yet. She goes, done. Let's go. Starts walking to her car. Uh, they go out. Yes. They go out to the bar. Yes. My mom takes a shot. I don't even remember what he ended up giving her, but it was like a hoot and a half. She was out there, and I think like three of her Bible study ladies went with her, and they're like, yes. like all these like Christian Bible study ladies don't drink ever. Yeah. Are all out at the bar. She like, takes a drink. Let's she's go like, Ardell. she's like, all right. Church starts at nine forty five. Like I'll see you there, whatever. And she's like, come by the house, and we'll all go together. And then he did. The other next day, he ended up going to church with us. Oh my um, gosh. I love but it. I say that because after we got back from church, he actually went to church with us three more times. Oh my gosh. Did he like it? And, um, yeah. And then we were talking and he's like, this isn't at all how I like, this isn't what I grew up with. Not what he thought. He's right. like, he's like, I'm so used to like the sit, steal, the like sit, kneel, yeah, stand, yeah. sit, kneel, stand. Yeah. Feel like you're going to get smited by the good Lord on the spot for like looking the wrong way during the wrong part of like the homily or yeah. whatever, you know? And, and so I feel like a lot of people who grew up that way whether like in a very strict religious culture or very strict religious atmosphere Mm -hmm. have a bad taste for what like accepting grace and mercy filled christianity looks like or can be Mm -hmm. or what even a group of people in a church look like who are filled with the holy spirit in that way and exude those characters characteristics Mm -hmm. they just have a bad taste in their mouth because they grew up in this way that was very like you're going to hell and you're going to burn and you're going to die if you don't do a b c and d and if you don't live the perfect life and if you don't give enough money to the church and if you don't do this and if you Mm -hmm. don't like do your like do your penance and if penance penance no done um and if you don't you know like go to confession however many times a week and follow this lit like very Mm -hmm. strict list of rules you're going to burn in hell right And you're a bad person and you're a bad Christian. And I feel like so many people who have grown up in that have never heard, like, the grace, the love, the mercy, that filled gospel. Mm -hmm. No one's heard it before. And so there's this this big, I feel like there's this big misconception out there around who God really is and what his character really is and how, you know, Christians even, you know, um, present it to the world Mm-hmm. As you know, that's literally what Christians are. Many Chris, many Christs many is Christ. what it means, and because they grew up in this very cut and dry mm-hmm. religious atmosphere, I would like to say too, though I don't think like it just has to be the Catholic Church that can be like no. that. It can be literally like any church. It can be literally any church. It can be any Protestant church. Um, I and- guess I just I I picked I picked Catholic out because I feel like that's what I've had. The most experienced with, and mind you guys, I've been to some very lovely Catholic churches too. Um, where yeah, they're where they say, not, not. I was gonna say nothing Catholics. against, no. yeah, nothing against like the Catholic faith or the Catholic Church. I a hundred percent believe like if you're Catholic, you can be like a Christian. Like you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, so, there's there there can be people you know in a uh, Mennonite brother in church who are not Christian. Exactly. And people who are, and there exactly. can be people in a Catholic church yes. who are Christian and who aren't. There can yes. be people in a Lutheran church mm-hmm. who are and who aren't, and an old school Baptist or even freaking Amish like that's not what I'm saying I feel like yeah but like you said I thought we should should clear that up yeah clear that up I specifically put Catholic down in my notes because I feel like that's what I've had the most um experience with of Mm -hmm. people being truly hurt by a church or by a religion or by a group of people people Mm -hmm. it has specifically been picked out as catholic yeah Yeah. but that that happens all across the board oh yeah totally that happens all across the board in any denomination or religion yeah wow that was there the anything other, else? Well, the other one was, I was gonna, we had down the Christians, like, don't drink. But we already covered that. Oh, yeah. Or did no. you want to cover it anymore? I drink beer. <laughs> I drink beer. <laughs> no, yeah. People have, and um, we have an episode planned coming up that's that we'll touch even further into. So that's, I think, also, we can wait a little bit on that. But, yeah. no. Uh, Christians drink. 
Yeah. Some Christians drink, some Christians don't. Some Christians don't drink. Some Christians believe it's a big no-no. Some Christians believe that it's just a no-no for them, and it's okay that other Christians drink. Right. Some um, people think everyone should do it. I personally... <laughs> <laughs> some people think every everyone night. needs to drink right now. No. Um, but I, I, th- I think I pretty much across the board, getting drunk drunk, like getting drunk, yeah, that's is like a big a no-no. no-no. Uh, that one's like pretty black and white. That one's pretty black and white. Bible, so. uh, but yeah, I don't know. Heavy hitters, uh, hopefully we didn't confuse you too much. Hopefully I didn't give too much misinformation. Sorry if I did. Um, I'm not a theological expert. That's what makes us interesting to listen to. Because I've literally tried to listen to theological podcasts. I get five minutes in, not even, two minutes in. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Right. Literally every word that's coming out of your mouth, I don't know what it means. Like, are you speaking another language? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he just stretched. He's so cute. Yeah. He makes so many noises. Top of my dog. Um, yeah. Do you have any other final words, final thoughts? Uh, follow us on Instagram. At yeah, Fabio follow us on Instagram. DM us if you have any questions. Um, we'd love to answer them. Or try to. Or have someone else answer them for um, us. But yeah, mostly, I know I gave a disclaimer at the beginning, but um, I feel like I always just need to to make myself feel I better. I feel like this is really good that we made this a two-part episode, because wow. Yeah, this it would have been a two-part episode. Yeah. But um, I don't know everything. I'm definitely not an expert. Neither is Cameron. Again, no. conversational podcast. No. We're not judging you. We don't know anything or, I mean, we don't know everything. Uh, so take us all with a pillar of salt. Um, don't come at us too hard. And as always, it has been lovely talking to you guys. Yes, we love you guys. And you'll hear us again next week for another episode of Caffeine and Combo Podcast. Goodbye. Uh, bye-bye. <laughs>